Welcome back to the Kaiser Report. I'm Max Kaiser. Time now to turn to Reggie Middleton of BoomBusBlog.com. Reggie, welcome back to the Kaiser Report. Thank you very much. Good to be back. All right, Reggie, you're out with an explosive new report uh, talking about some the financial ground zero, as you call it, the fraud at the highest levels of AIB in Ireland. Talk about it. Well, I was always skeptical of uh, the Irish banks. Uh, their problems are very similar to the problems we have in other EU and U.S. Uh, banks, uh, where basically they gave a lot of loans, didn't underwrite them very carefully or accurately against overpriced or overvalued collateral. That collateral reduced in value, okay, but the loan stayed. And basically, when you have assets that drop and debt that remains the same, it's equity that's eaten away. And that's the problem with these banks as well as the other banks. Okay. Now, All right, Reggie, let me jump in and ask you this. In other words, if, I, if I'm understanding you correctly, the, the Irish banking system, we were told, was bailed out. 100% of the bond holder, holders were made whole. The state took on 100% of all the liability. The Troika points to Ireland as the poster child of everything that can go right with their prescriptions. Are you telling me that the Irish banking system is about to get another huge uh, bailout and collapse? Well, I have no idea if they're going to get a bailout, but, uh, you know, the collapse looks like it's going to happen. Uh, if it doesn't happen, you know, it looks like there may be some pressed digitation, you know, some Harry Potter style magic. But uh, the problem is there. OK, now I went over the initial problem. And of course, it were bailed out once, uh, possibly again. And then they had a Troika injection because the government possibly didn't have enough money to bail out another time. But after going through the papers and going through the records um, that were filed and both with regulatory bodies in Ireland and America with the SEC and the actual paperwork charges that were given to the um, offices in Ireland, you see a lot of discrepancies. One very big discrepancy was the actual charge. Uh, a charge is very similar to a mortgage um, in the U.S., where they give an asset um, in exchange for financing, and they pledge the collaterals, the collateral, um, to the person that they got the loan from, or the entity that they got the loan from. The actual paper that was filed with the Irish office says that um, all the each and every security, eligible security, is covered under this uh, charge. Now, in their annual report, it states that certain securities were covered under the charge. Now, there's only, it's a very minor difference from a nomenclature perspective, but from a meaning perspective, it's an awful lot. Now, it appears that a few of the lay a lot of lay people are having a problem understanding the difference. So I'm going to give a very visual understanding. Here we have American notes, right? It's a bunch of money. Okay. Now you have a person who says they have a claim on certain of these notes. And then you have another person who says I have a claim on each and every one of these notes. Now, which one of these would be the more valuable claim? certain of these notes or each and every right absolutely and this is basically the issue with AIB and the right. AIB is saying to the public that there's a claim on certain 
but the actual document that they filed said there's a claim on each of the notes. Right. So uh, as we've seen throughout this now entire... Now, that way, hopefully, it's easy to understand. As we've seen throughout this entire crisis, there's always, you always come back to a question of the value of the collateral. The collateral that people are using to buttress all of these refinancing uh, schemes and bailout schemes it itself is not worth the paper that it's not printed on. So here you have AIB about to crash again. Now, the Irish taxpayer owns AIB. So is the Irish population about to get uh, Cyprus? In other words, is there going to be a bail-in now in Ireland where they're going to ask depositors to contribute? They're just going to take money from depositors. This is a new trend. We saw it with MF Global. We saw it in Cyprus. Are we going to see it now in Ireland, Reggie? That depends on if the Troika is willing, the Troika and Germany et al. are truly willing to foot the bill for the full bailout. Um, you call it a bail-in, but, you know, it's basically a bailout. The, discuss what happened in Cyprus and what very well may happen in Ireland. You have several levels of capital structure in a bank. You have depositors on the bottom, and depositors, most depositors think of themselves as investors. They think of some, themselves as someone who avail themselves of a bank's services for a very, very low risk storage of their capital. Okay. And then you have higher on the hierarchy, you have junior and senior bondholders, okay, who assume risk voluntarily in exchange for a materially higher return than the depositors. And then above them, you have the equity stakeholders who assume even more risk for presumably a higher return. Okay, now, I believe you should wipe out all investors who assume risk, you know, if a bank goes bust, because that's basically what you are getting return for, the risk of it going bust or the potential for it doing well. Depositors are a slightly different story. Now, you do assume risk when you put your money in a bank, okay, but you assume a very modicum, modicum, low modicum of risk, okay? If you wipe out depositors, you basically destroy the banking system because the banks basically are made up of depositors. That is the largest um, funding base, that is the most liquid funding base, and it should be the scarcest funding base. But for some reason, I think a lot of the mindset in Ireland is we have no choice but to put our money in banks. If there's even the slightest chance of you losing any principal at all, okay, is it worth 0.07% return on your money, or 1%, or 1.2%, or 3%? You know, well, ask the people in I, Cyprus who are getting four, four and a half, five to six percent if it was worth losing a 60 percent of their capital. Right. I mean, in Ireland, it, it is an interesting situation because, of course, the banks are backstopped now by the Troika, which includes the IMF, the ECB and the EU. And what you're saying and what now people understand is that, for example, the IMF is in self bankrupt. The EU is bankrupt. The uh, ECB, European Central Bank, is insolvent. It's back. It's bankrupt. So people need to understand that these banks that they're putting their money in are, are backed by banks that are in turn bankrupt. The Bank of International Settlements, which collateralizes all these central banks, is insolvent. So uh, that's something people need to wrap their minds around. Of course, the governments and the state-owned media outlets like RTE in Ireland have failed to carry that message and tell the truth to the population. So they're culpable in an act of financial terrorism. That's without doubt. But the people in Ireland feel as though it's their moral obligation to help bail out these banks. Is that true? Well, we'll find out because uh, I don't believe, especially if Cyprus is a template, I don't believe that the ECB and the IMF are going to bail out the banks. I believe that the guys with their checking and savings accounts are going to bail out the banks. 
um, if Cyprus is a template. And I truly do believe that it's either Cyprus is a template or you're going to have a lot of political uh, ramifications when Germany is asked to foot a bill, as well as the rest of the EC, the EU, the IMF, etc. Um, this can't go on for, for long. I have a whole list of banks. You know, I listed Anglo Irish, I listed Allied Irish, but I have a whole list of banks to reveal. And each and every one of them have played significant games or bust from a purely fundamental perspective. And, you know, the way I see it, and I could be wrong, of course, you know, I have been wrong in 1999 once, so it is possible. But the way I see it, each and every one of these are going to need a bailout if you look at them from a fundamental perspective. Okay, so just to recap, uh, your call is that Irish banks that have already crashed and needed a bailout are in a position now, as we've said on this show now for several years, and as I told people in Ireland, myself personally, these banks are going to crash again and require yet another huge response, which could be like Cyprus, where they just take the money directly out of your account. Now, I wanted to ask you about the connection between the Troika um, is uh, as part of the bailout, they didn't want to uh, avoid a credit event that would trigger uh, the credit default swap mechanism from coming into play. Uh, so how much pressure did the U.S. and the American bankers apply to the IMF to hide the fact when they went through the initial crash that this was all about preserving wealth on Wall Street and had absolutely nothing to do with the people in Ireland. If I was a fly on the wall, I would assume that fly would have heard that the U.S. was basically calling the shots. You know, if you take a look at the association that um, determines credit events, okay, that association is made up of, or that panel is made up of some of the biggest CDS writers, you know, in the world. So that's like going to a fox and asking him his opinion of where the chicken should be served for dinner. Okay, fair enough. Uh, let, me, uh, let me ask you, let me expand on that a little bit. Uh, what kind of blowback are we going to see in the U.S., if any, and what banks might be uh, involved? That's interesting because if you, can, if, if you can prove misrepresentation, I don't, and I'm not a lawyer, I'm definitely not a lawyer at all, so you know, don't take it as legal advice, but as a layperson, it's a common sense perspective. If you could prove misrepresentation, do CDS get paid off or is this a different uh, you know, venue? In addition, I've, several banks, okay, several banks are proven to be significantly undercapitalized or materially over, over encumbered. Okay, what happens then? Even if CDS are written off, there's not enough capital in the system, not enough equity in the system to pay it off. You know, I, if I'm not mistaken, when I was on your show before, my opinion of the CDS is we have five people in a room, okay, one of them had some money, and everybody else was borrowing money from them in a circle, okay, and they were insuring this person, they're, they're insuring their partners. I insure B, B insures C, C insures D, D insures E, and then E comes back and insures me. If one of us take a significant loss, you just have downloads for right okay and it's just not enough capital not enough money to pay for it if this was a porno <laughs> film that scene would be called the daisy chain <laughs> yes it would <laughs> let me move on to uh, uh, post Cyprus what about Spain Italy France what are the signs that your s the savings in these countries are about to be stolen by the Troika and, <laughs> and these other clowns I will get to them you know, through the site, and it's, it's, it's actually a lot of work, it's a lot of time. There's that many banks that are in trouble. But I can tell you this much. Um, the money, if, if you consider it to be stolen, it will probably be stolen by those who ran the banks into the ground and then expect to be recapitalized versus driven out of business. Okay. Now, there is a sense where you could say it's justified that those who put their money in the banks will lose their money if they put their money in the bad bank. But then you have to re-examine the entire system and what a bank is, okay? Is the common depositor, is the common grandmother who puts their money into a certificate deposit or demand deposit or savings account, is she expected to be a credit analysis, that a credit analyst, I'm sorry? Problem is, interest rates are too low, okay? You put your money into a bank, you're getting, in the U.S., you're getting 0.07, I'm sorry, 0.7% return, maybe 1% return, okay? If there's any risk there, rates have to be much higher. There's no way in the world to avoid higher rates when people realize that there's significant risk in their banks. Even a small modicum of risk, rates have to go up. There are just not enough fools to go around to give a risky investment to somebody 
uh, to take a risky investment, to give somebody a risky investment and return, give them a return of 0.7%. It's just not enough fools to go around. It may be a lot, but not enough to support a global banking system of the size that it is now. All right, Reggie Middleton, we're out of time. Thanks so much for being on the Kaiser Report. You're very welcome. It's good to be back. It's good to be on a truly independent show. All right, and that's going to do it for this edition of the Kaiser Report with me, Max Kaiser, and Stacey Herbert. I want to thank my guest, Reggie Middleton of the Boom Bust Block.